welcome to Patriots Lament, our newest Saturday show here on KFAR for the next hour. We are going to be talking about issues that relate to uh, liberty and, of course, the general lack thereof these days. Uh, you know, personally, uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show, by the way, uh, joining us in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises for all of your trucking and construction needs. We've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Uh, good morning, Steve. Also, I, we have to... Uh no, I'm going to get the introductions, and then, okay. then we'll get a, then we'll get, a, we'll get a Far North Tactical, the uh, the place over there at uh, 8th and Lacey, where you can get yourself armed to take over a small country. Is that pretty much what it's all about, Aaron Bennett, joining us? If you us? have some minor country you need taking over. All yeah. right, beautiful. And then also from the uh, Campaign for Liberty here in the Fairbanks chapter, uh, Dave Giesel. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Steve. All right, now, Josh, you were saying, are you feeling safer this morning? Oh, yeah, I'm been sleeping well at night knowing Michael Anderson's in jail. Well, not just that, but now, I mean, knowing that the, that uh, things have been changed around so that the burden of proof is to prove that you're innocent before you can even be set free on bail. That, oh, oh now, man, I just, I, I, I feel so much safer now knowing that all the criminals out there, especially dangerous people like Man- Mike Anderson, they have to prove that they're innocent. If there's even any doubt that they might have done it, they have to stay in jail. I, I, I feel so much nicer about that. We're referencing to a story in the new in the new in the, uh, charges against Michael Anderson have been upheld in the 241 murder plot. Pretty interesting the way uh, if you go to the news miner online, you can read it, or it's probably in the paper today. But they say that uh, evidence against Mr. Anderson is not as compelling as the evidence against his co-defendants, but there's still enough to keep him in there. And it goes along talking about. Uh, how Anderson said he wasn't going to go to jail for Cox and this and that. There's the bottom line of it though is getting down to the part where, uh, well, where'd it go? The judge says that the mere fact that there's doubt that he did it is not enough to let him go. Now, I didn't go to public school, so I don't know what they teach there. But I'm pretty sure the way it's supposed to be is if there is any reasonable doubt whatsoever, you let them go. My, yeah, is I, there any public school? I, I, I went to public oh, school. No, I did. I went to public school. And I remember very, very clearly being taught that the whole idea is that during the trial, if it is proven, that, that they basically have to prove your guilt during the trial. Uh, and, and that basically if... You're not a threat. You can get out on bail beforehand as long as you promise to show up for the trial. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad things have changed, though. I mean, this is gonna, this is a real uh, game changer now that people, uh, we're gonna be so much safer now. They can just round up everybody, uh, and and we can all prove our innocence. Save a lot of money in trials too. I'm so, I'm to have them. Yeah, you can just round us all up. Here I found it says, uh, Stewart said evidence of doubt alone is not a strong enough defense. And now that same that's Judge Stewart. That same judge is going to get a jury, presumably. I mean, it's in April, so we don't know what will change by then. We may not have the right to jury trial by then. But they're going to he is going to have a jury panel in front of him, and he is going to, presumably, we hope, he will still say this, that if they find any reasonable doubt, they should find him not guilty. Oh, but that's not what he said. He I mean, contradicts. He, I mean, right he here just, he says he, evidence he just of said, doubt alone is not strong enough. Therefore, if he's if he's going to be consistent, what he's going to have to tell the jury is if you find any any evidence at all that he may have done it, even if there is considerable doubt that he did not, then you really should send him to jail. Right. Just just in case. The evidence of doubt is shifting from the. Uh, one who's being prosecuted to the prosecutor. If there's any doubt in your mind that the government is right or wrong, if there's any doubt that they're wrong, you should just go along with what they said. Well, I mean, that, that, that kind of goes along with the, the other stuff that's happening in our country right now, like with the TSA and the, the whole uh, Homeland Security. If you see something, say something. I think so. Probably. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you see something, say something. Presume that your fellow citizens are up to no good. And report them to the government. Yeah, it's a uh, weird. Just watching an ad that is literally being played. I don't know where, somewhere in the United States, but the ad says it's a pretty dramatic ad, and it says if you see something suspicious, say something, report it, report things. Basically, turn in your fellow Americans. 
follow the state. What's wrong with that? Oh, I'm absolutely nothing. I mean, that's what we should be doing. We should be turning in our fellow citizens. No, seriously, what's wrong with that? With what? What's wrong with keeping a watch out for enemies against the state? <laughs> well, I'm looking at one. <laughs> I, 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 be careful, Josh. You're holding up a mirror. Yeah. No. Anyways. No, seriously. <laughs> if you guys are going to say it, what's wrong with that? Uh, okay. What's what's wrong with that? Really, Aaron? They, <laughs> it, 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 okay. <laughs> Turning your people against each other for the state is wrong. Well, people don't have anything to hide, do they? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, just like the Come Jews. On, what do the Jews have to say? Uh, did, yeah, okay. All right. Now look, my, my head's going to explode. Aaron, I, I understand sometimes that you like to, to put your tongue firmly in cheek and, and make a joke. Ha ha. Are you joking? Or do you, do you no, really what I'm j- saying is, is it's obvious that they're pushing everybody towards how the fascist state was set up. But seriously, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with us all looking out at our neighbors and making sure that they're not doing anything against the state? Hmm. If yeah. they don't have anything to hide, then why are they worried about it? Why would anybody be worried about it? Oh, okay, the, the thing that I'm worried about, to be quite honest, is your perception of what I'm doing. Just because you look out and you look at something that I'm doing and you don't like it, that doesn't mean that what I'm doing is actually wrong. For instance, let's say I'm I'm burning some trash in my backyard. Maybe I have the right permits. Maybe I don't have the right permits. Maybe I'm burning uh, some papers that I don't want you to find. Maybe I'm burning leaves. Or, or is it something more sinister and deep, and our duty isn't to the state but to the individual liberties of each other? I think the th- point comes back to what you said. Why aren't you turning people in to the state? It's to the state. The state is not who we're supposed to be loyal to supposed to be loyal to each individual's liberties. And if we knew our neighbors and, and we knew what our, then, then we would have a pretty good idea whether or not our neighbor was actually trying to do something that was going to hurt other people. But you know what? Uh, really, if you think about it, if, if somebody is involved in political activity, for instance, if somebody is a, a member of the Republican Party or the Democrat Party, and, and they are plotting together with other Democrats or other Republicans for an overthrow of the current regime, whether it is through a peaceful means at the ballot box or, or something else. Even if it's through a peaceful means, couldn't it be construed that they are conniving together, that they are somehow in a conspiracy against the government? That's not possible if you're a Democrat or Republican. You'd have to be a different entity. Like a libertarian or part of the godless monkey party? Yeah. You'd have to be outside. Of those those <laughs> parties are sanctioned. Those parties are the state. All right. It's hard to overthrow yourself. I mean, they're doing a good job, actually. Though. They're putting themselves out of a job, hopefully sooner than later. But. Uh, all right. Okay. Here, here's part of what really gets my goat on this whole issue, is that if, if we find ourselves suspicious of everyone around us and constantly worrying about what somebody else is doing instead of being worried about what we are doing, then basically what we're going to end up being is a bunch of tattletales that are capable of dealing with anything on our own. We're going to be constantly calling to mommy, whether it's the nanny state or, or whether it's, uh, it's some all-powerful leader to come in and save us. And we're not going to be able to do anything on our own. And our whole concept of liberty it was going to be completely turned on its head because we're not going to have any. There's yeah, the, the FBI actually announced uh, this week that they were going to have 15,000 uh, informants, citizen informants across the country. They're working on building Fif- up that force. 15,000 citizen informants. Right. That's called the Stasi. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, which, if anybody doesn't know what the Stasi is, I mean, that's basically that's every fascist regime has had those, whether it's the uh, the state police in, in Germany or whether it was the Yugoslavians. Right. Uh, it's uh, It's the same thing. You've got the secret police, and you've got people turning each other in, and I don't know. Gentlemen, is it Hasn't it always, without fail, every time in history, ended in the killing of innocents? Yes. We're rounding them up. Well, we're, we're above that. We're, we don't do things. Basically, what it's doing is allowing the state to be involved in every little aspect of your life, getting the people to not worry about whether they have rights or not, but to just, oh, turn in your neighbor. I mean, look at everyone that gets upset if you're not paying your fair share. Well, he's not paying his fair share. I'm going to turn him in. Why? Because you're paying it. Well, too bad. Life's not fair. Maybe that guy doesn't think it's his fair share to have to pay. Just maybe you're the dumb one for doing it. (laughs) 
Well, okay. Uh, e- even if we do pay our fair share, at, at some point, who is it that's making the decision on what the money's being paid to or paid for? It, it's something that really, really bothers me when you take money from one person and give it to another person, especially if it's something that the first person doesn't agree with. I mean, it's it's one thing for us to come together in an agreement to live in society and say we need a police force to keep us safe, or we need fire protection, or we need you know whatever else that we have today in the in modern society that people feel that we can't live without. I think that we could live without an awful lot of these things if people were to actually take care of each other on, on a more well simple neighbor to neighbor basis. But the bigger we get as a society. The bigger the empire gets, the harder it is for people to take care of each other, and the more we need a government force to step in and take care of the things that people aren't willing to take care of themselves. This is how we get these ridiculous programs like TSA and Homeland Security and everything else. Am I wrong? No, and it's not more. It's not that we have a police force either. What we're talking about is a police state. Everything you do is illegal. Everything you do may violate the state. Turn your neighbor in. Turn your neighbor in. Round your Jews up. Round your Slavics up. Round your gypsies up. Round them up. Round them up. Look at history. I know we weren't supposed to, and we all get lamb blasted by callers because, you guys look at history and think you know something. (laughs) (laughs) That's stupid. I got in trouble for saying someone was dumb the other week, but that's stupid. You have to look at history. How did the Nazi regime come into power? You know what they did? They got people to turn their neighbors in. They got people to turn their neighbors in. Until finally, you didn't have any neighbors. You're the only one left. And then they showed up and hauled you off, too. Until they made the comment, the only free man in Germany was when he was asleep. There you go. And in prison. (laughs) Uh, Is that freedom? (laughs) Yeah. A sort. (laughs) Even then, if you're not thinking the right thoughts these days, you can be uh, charged with basically thought crime. You look at what's going on now, they're beginning to arrest people for things that they haven't done yet, but yeah. but that they might do because of, of words that they've spoken that have indicated that they might be basically thinking the wrong thoughts. And How- what about this whole thing with the FBI using informants to create crimes? Uh, yeah, you know, that's I mean, there was go, a, to the two, there, go to the great, 241 yeah. thing. I mean, that's a small example, but they took an informant who was in trouble with the law. They said, go plant this seed in these people's minds. They took another informant and said, go sell them these illegal weapons. That That's sick in my mind. That's well, really sick. Like you said, it's a small part of it. It's been happening all over the place. There was a great article in the Alaska Dispatch this week about that. You, you know, that there were paid FBI informants that were working for a couple of the political campaigns in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are actually paid informants from the FBI that were working for political campaigns. How, I, I mean, at, at one point or another, some people, I, I, what's it going to take for people to wake up? What is it going to take? One of the main reasons why you wanted to start this show was to to remind people about our basic liberties and and to talk about the the Bill of Rights. Look at every single one of the the rights listed in the Bill of Rights. The whole point of it, why did we have the Bill of Rights in the first place? To tell the government, to enumerate the government, what a few of the citizens' rights were that they could not violate. Well, wasn't the Constitution... In, in and of enough without without this, without without these enumerations of rights after the Constitution wasn't the Constitution enough? Well, the founders, uh, some of them, felt like the original Constitution of force effect to say. Well, they just wanted to enumerate. They said this isn't enough. We want to have these ten articles in here that say you will not mess with freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You will, you will not you will infringe on the right to keep and bear arms. You will not go into someone's home without having a reasonable cause. You and and will yet, not, look you will not, at you every will not. single one of those, which of those really fully stands anymore? Can you go out and have, take, uh, take the very First Amendment, freedom of speech? Yes, it is fear-mongering. If you're not afraid, there's something wrong with you right now because your freedoms are gone. It's not, yep. that, they, it's not that they are being eroded. They are gone. You Think guys, about freedom of speech. You're acting like we're going to end up like Nazi Germany. It's unbelievable. Those people were barbarians. They call them the land of poets and um, philosophers. 